Welcome to the channel guys, in this one we're going to be talking about Venus flytraps and going over their basic care requirements, including environment, lighting, watering, feeding, soil, all sorts of good stuff. To start with just a couple basic things to know about Venus flytraps, they are native to North and South Carolina. There's a small section, kind of boggy coastal areas that they grow in. These plants are carnivorous, so you plant a few of these in the front yard, and that little yappy neighborhood dog, gone. Just kidding, sadly they don't get that big, I'm sorry. But these guys can actually live up to 20 years. As far as an environment and lighting goes, they're gonna require between 70 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit, high humidity and good air circulation. If you live in an area where you can plant these outside, that's perfect. If they are gonna be indoors on a windowsill or just under a grow light, they're gonna need at least six hours of direct sunlight. Make sure if you do have grow lights on these guys, they're gonna be at least six to eight inches away. As far as a winter environment goes, they really shouldn't get down below 40 degrees, but they can survive the winter in zones eight to 10. Watering and feeding these plants is obviously a bit different than most because they are a carnivorous plant so they're going to get their nutrients from what they actually digest from their leaves. Feeding this plant they can actually go up to two months without eating but it is recommended to feed them about one to two insects per month if you want to keep them healthy. When you do feed these plants they're going to take about three to five days typically to digest any flies, crickets, worms, whatever you're going to be able to give them. But make sure whatever you're feeding them is going to be smaller than one third the size of the trap that you're putting it into. If it is bigger than that not going to be able to close and those digestive enzymes aren't going to be able to do their job properly. Now how they actually eat is pretty interesting. So in each one of these traps or leaves they've actually got a handful of trigger hairs each one. So if you look super close when you get yours you'll see those little hairs in there and two of those have to be tripped in pretty quick succession for this leaf to snap shut. So they are pretty sensitive if you get too close to these guys and are talking or breathing too loud on them you'll actually see a lot of the leaves snap shut. Make sure you're not triggering these on purpose or on accident very often if you're not actually feeding them because it's just a waste of the plant's energy and can use up a lot of that extra energy and make it harder for them to survive. One other thing I should add about feeding these guys, typically it is best to feed live. Don't be feeding like hamburger or anything. It's actually the movement of the insect that releases those enzymes from the leaf so they can actually digest its prey. As far as watering goes, the soil does always need to be damp. Typically, the recommended method is to put it in a pot and then put it in a small tray or saucer with about one inch of water. That way that substrate can just soak up that water the roots can get whatever they need. You can see with ours, it's a little bit different since it doesn't have any actual drainage on the bottom. We just put a gravel drainage layer, keep a little bit of water in there, and that water's gonna keep wicking up as it heats up, kind of evaporates through the soil, and keep all this very damp for those roots. Now, as far as soil goes, like we talked about, these guys get their nutrients from what they digest. So they typically do best in slightly wet, acidic soil with low nutrients. So you're not gonna wanna use regular potting soil for these guys because obviously they typically add fertilizers. With ours, we just did a mix of one part sand to two parts sphagnum moss. This way, that sphagnum moss is gonna be able to retain that water really well. And that sand is just gonna give it a little bit more substance to grow into. So there is one thing that's nice is that you don't have to add any extra fertilizers as long as you're feeding these guys well. Now, like a lot of plants, these guys do go through a dormancy or wintering period where their leaves are gonna die back, they're gonna appear totally dead. At that point, you're gonna wanna keep these guys at a lower temperature. If you're keeping them indoors, just leave them alone, don't try to feed them. That'll go on for a few months and then you can slowly start raising the temperature and seeing those leaves green back up. Now I know I mentioned the pesky neighborhood dogs that were gonna be gone at the beginning of this video. Sadly, these guys don't actually get that big. They're typically about you know, five inches wide, five inches tall maximum. So you're not gonna be able to get rid of any neighborhood dogs, but you might see a few flies go missing. Still cool. So in conclusion, Venus flytraps aren't too difficult to maintain. As long as you stay on top of keeping that soil damp, as well as feeding them. All in all, definitely a cool addition to the house. If you guys learned something or are interested in figuring out what you can do about that neighborhood dog, make sure to hit like and subscribe for more content in the future. Thanks for watching.